ML Sports Take here, brought to you by Stanley Law Offices and Welch and & Company Jewelers. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Trying to get up to the 1,500 subscribers here. I think I'm about 22 away, so I appreciate everybody's support. And make sure you share it if you can as well. So before I get into the, the real crux of this video, okay, I want to kind of reestablish my feeling. I hate expansion most of the time. I hate 10th place trophy society. I hate all of it. I hate the extra wild card team in the NFL, in Major League Baseball. I hate the idea of going to 96 teams in the NCAA tournament. I hate the idea of more expansion in hockey, even though it's worked in Seattle and in Vegas. They're talking about it already, by the way. Salt Lake City is probably going to get a team. They're, they want to try it again in Atlanta, which, I mean, how many times do you have to try that before it doesn't work? Although I do kind of have a little interest in a team there now that TNT has a ton of the hockey coverage. But you get my point. I can't stand the college football playoff going to 12 teams because I think it dilutes the product entirely. I could almost live with eight, but I'm good with four. I don't need number 12 to get bludgeoned by number one uh, eventually or whatever whatever the case may be. Maybe we'll have a Cinderella situation eventually, but uh, I don't need 12 teams there. And everybody thinks that 96 in basketball or 12 in football is going to solve it all. But then 13 complains and 14 complains and 97 complains. So somebody's always going to say, well, then you got to make that bigger and this bigger and that bigger. Okay. So let's come to this video. Here's the thing. If they're going to expand it anyway, and, and this is kind of a video, please understand, I, I'm doing this video because of what's happening anyway, right? There's no control over anything at this point, right? The NCAA is out of control. The NIL is out of control. Transfer portal is out of control. They just threw these things up against the wall, hoping that they were going to stick. No legal stuff, no CBAs, no contracts, no two-year window to prepare for it. Athletic departments, ADs and presidents, does not make a difference. They didn't give it a two-year window to allow this thing to come to a head. Now, mistakes were going to happen no matter what, because they always do, and then you got to try to fix them and all the rest, but keep that in mind that this is one of the major problems, that they just threw this out there without any real plan, and now they're kind of you know spinning wheels to try to figure out how this thing is going to, to work. Um, so throwing all of that out there, that the tournament's going to expand anyway, that NIL is out of control anyway, the NCAA is a joke, uh, all these things are there, portal, NIL, NCAA expansion, blah, blah, blah. All of that's going to happen anyway, and it's out of our control. Why not do this? Hear me out. Thought about this a lot yesterday when I was swimming in the pool at the gym and the day before swimming in the pool at the gym. You look at the NCAA basketball situation, right? We have what, about 351 teams, right? The ultimate goal for every single one of them is to make the NCAA tournament for whatever reason it is, right? It could be this past season with St. Bonaventure in terms of, you know, what the releases said after the fact that that's our standard, you know, who knew, right? That Bonaventure, a team that, yeah, they've gone to the tournament, you know, 2012, 2018, 2021. They should have gone in 15, 16, obviously. But we know the hurdles. We know the challenges. We know everything that's there. Uh, a lot of that is the politicking, like we saw in 15, 16, with them being left out. In 17, 18, they crushed it in the last month and a half of the season. Record was great. Conference record was great. And they still got a play-in. They still got the first four in Dayton when they didn't deserve that. Fun to beat UCLA, sure, but they should have been in the final 64. The challenges that are out there for a school like Bana. Little did we know, though, that, hey, the expectation is to make the NCAA tournament every single year, even though reality is, when you say that, it's impossible for Bonaventure to do that. In fact, it's impossible for even a Louisville to do that, a, a program that's in the basement currently. Syracuse has missed the tournament three years in a row. Final four or bus, championship or bus, North Carolina, they missed the tournament last year, which is absolutely unheard of. Whatever the case may be, whoever the program is, it could be Eastern Kentucky, St. Bonaventure, Syracuse, North Carolina, Texas, USC, Dayton. It doesn't matter what the program is. The goal is to make the NCAA tournament. And from there, you have sections of expectations where Carolina is different than Bonaventure. You could have an Arizona that's different than a Rhode Island. It doesn't matter. From there, your expectations certainly would be different in terms of what you think the program should be. Syracuse, tournament every year expectation. Sweet 16 every few years. Tournament every eight or nine years. And a shot at winning a national championship once or even twice a decade. That is the standard that Jim Beheim set. That is not 
probably the realistic expectations for, I don't know, a UB, a LaSalle, um, you know, uh, in Indiana State, whatever the case may be. So when you loop all this together and they're going to expand anyway, and everybody's goal is to make the NCAA tournament, and mostly nobody cares about the NIT at this point. It's just a small section of teams, you know, teams, players, coaches, ADs, presidents, etc. If we're into this world where it's NCAA tournament or bust for every single team for different reasons with those specific expectations on top as far as how far you're going to go in the NCAA tournament, then how about this? How about we just cancel the season? Cancel the regular season and cancel the conference tournaments. Now, am I putting out a video right now that's a fantasy land, a dream world thing, something in the clouds? Of course I am, but it makes a lot of sense. Just have college basketball play one month of practices for every team, right? In like that October, November window, whatever it might be. You start November 1st, you start November 1st. Then you do it all the way up until Thanksgiving. We don't have non-con conference play, conference tournament play. What's the point? What's the point now of even automatic bids at this particular juncture? It just does, it doesn't matter at, at, at this point because for whatever reason, it's a tournament or bus situation. And then even if you're a Bonaventure and you could use that branding and all the rest, you still opt out of the, NI, uh, the NCAA, uh, the NIT tournament for all of the reasons that we know, Right taking the temperature of the room in a player's meeting, even though the players found out that they you know, said no to the NIT afterwards, which that was one part of the J.P. Butler interview that I was kind of trying to piece together. If they, had a, if they had a team meeting and Mark Schmidt took the temperature of the room, then he left and he and Manhurst decided to opt out and the players still didn't know after Mark took the temperature of the room whether they were going to play in the postseason and then they opted out and then the players found out about the screenshot on ESPN. I guess that was the timeline. But the bottom line is this. What we could do is just, and, and I know what a lot of people, well, what about, you know, uh, uh, Rupp Arena and what about the Dome and what about Cameron and the Riley Center and all these great places, these, you know, uh, Allen Fieldhouse, all these great places. You're not going to have any games there. What are we going to do? Eh, hey, practice facility. Riley Center is a campus, uh, a campus center. It's the middle of campus. It's used for a lot of things. It's used to radio station. It, it's used for ROTC at the basement, I believe. If you know, kids get their mail there, they eat at the RC Cafe. Just use it as a campus rec center, right? The campus activity center. Everything goes through there. Fine. You got offices at the top. You got the bookstore. Have a good time. Do all those sorts of things in the gym. <clears throat> Whatever. We just have it for memories at this point. You just have it as practice. Use it as practices. I know. I'm a little shallow here. I'm a little, you know, a little crazy, right? Don't get me wrong. I don't like this idea. I'm just saying that if we have all these things, if we have all these balls in the air, if everything's out of our control and their control, NIL, portal, expansion's going to happen anyway, why not just cancel the season? And everybody goes to the NCAA tournament. Hey, you know what, Jim Beheim? You wanted 96 teams for years. You got 96. Wait, no, you don't. You have 100. No, you don't. You have 180, 210, 230, 280, 300, 320. No, keep going up. No, everybody's in. And what you do is, even though I hate the World Golf Rankings taking the rankings from before in terms of, you know, the FedEx Cup and all that. Um, you know, you sh it should be a here and now situation, especially how things change year to year. Basketball, you lose players at, at a rapid pace now like never before with the portal and NIL. Okay, whatever. But the simplest way to do it would be to just put all these teams in and you figure, well, how do you seed them? Just use what they did last the year before. Under every circumstance, who cares? Because seeding really doesn't matter now. You know, teams are underseeded, they're overseeded, they're overrated, they're underrated. Seeding doesn't matter whatsoever, as we have uh, we, we've already seen. Look at UConn. UConn didn't deserve any of the bracket that they got. They still got it. It almost seemed like the tournament was out to get them by putting the Big Ten, Big Twelve, SEC champ in their bracket. Right? I mean, come on. Teams are underseeded. They're overseeded. It happens all the time. And because of the balance and the competitive, you know the competitive balance of, of, of power, I should say, or competitive balance period, I guess, take out the power word. Um, we, we don't really have that much of a difference anymore between St. Mary's and an Oregon. We don't really have that much of a difference between first, second, third round teams. I know the chalk is walking right now, but if you watch the first, second, third rounds, there isn't that much of a difference until really the chalk does walk 
in the regional semifinals and beyond in the regional finals and all the rest. There's still been Cinderella since 06. We've seen George Mason, still a big deal to make a Final Four. George Mason, VCU, Butler twice. We've seen Loyola do it. We've seen a lot of teams. Florida Atlantic do it last year. Regardless of school population, you're considered the mid-major because of your brand. Put everybody in there and seed them from the year before. One through 351, you start the tournament during Feast Week, which is one of the great great weeks of college basketball right now that people don't talk about enough. You start it during Feast Week and you literally have a quadruple elimination tournament or a triple elimination tournament with weeks off, right? So you play, you know, the week, you go back to practice, kind of like the tournament is right now, right? You play that first, the first round, then you play, instead of playing a couple days later, you don't play a couple days later. You play a week later, right? And then you play a week later or whatever it would be. Now, you might say to yourself, well, wait a minute, you know, like when does this end? Who cares when it ends? Just make sure it ends in March so we can still call it March Madness, right? That's all I'm saying. A triple elimination tournament with 351 teams and the right schedule with time off, by the time you do it and delay and do practices and have time off, there you go. And the first couple of rounds are at the home venues. It's that simple. So the higher seed, you're home. Well, that takes care of the regular season, right? You miss the regular season? Okay. Well, you have two, three home games at Cameron, two, three home games at Rupp, two, three home games at uh, Allen Fieldhouse, two, three home games maybe at the Dome or the Riley Center or wherever the hell it might be. Some of the great venues, you still have a couple of those home games. Goody, goody. There's your regular season feel. Great. Conference tournament? <laughs> Who cares at this particular point? Doesn't matter. Conference tournaments in select places like the Garden, great places, fine. Have those venues host those games, boom, you're done. Send the Rangers on the road, send the Knicks on the road, uh, have, have some of the other good venues, fine. But we don't have the unique venue anymore anyway. They're played in these enormous arenas. They're played in Vegas. They're played here. They're played there. They're played in Indianapolis. And in the beginning rounds, nobody goes anyways because it's all TV. Who cares? This would be TV. You can still sign the deals. You can still sign the deals because every conference is in the tournament. Everyone's included. No matter what happened to the Pac-12, no matter what happened to the ACC, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because every conference tournament is in it. So you're signing the deals anyway, and your team's on. Every team's on anyway. Who gives a rip? I mean, if you look at the calendar and you look at the way it could be done, you probably could go quadruple quadruple elimination, right? So you go, you play a week, you go back to campus, you have your practices. Some, In some cases, you're not leaving campus because you hosted the game, and you just keep going. Quadruple elimination. And if you think about it quickly, if it's quadruple elimination in order, you know, once you get into the you know, the, the first part, second part, by the time you get through all those rounds and then before the final four and before the championship game, you have a week off. It's that simple. Cry me a river if, well, you took the week off and we're a hot team and, you know, it's too bad. That's the schedule, right? I mean, we don't know how teams are going to come out anyways. We've seen teams come out in the regular season when they've had two road games and play with their hair on fire and win both games and they're completely exhausted, then they have a week off and they look awful. You know, take a, take a look at NC State right now in the NCAA tournament. Your guess is as good as mine as far as rest and what it means. For God's sakes, we saw Napier and UConn do it. We saw Kemba Walker and UConn do it. We've seen teams do this all the time. Four games in four days, five and five. We've seen this all the time. Players play. They're used to playing 40 minutes all the time. They're used to playing all the time going back to the AAU days, especially when they become just college basketball players. Their adrenaline, their conditioning, it's built for this kind of stuff. And sometimes they have a little bit, a little bit of time off and look, and they look brutal. We don't know how they're going to come out. It, it, it's it, a com complete crap shoot, crap shoot. Everybody knows that. So why not at this point, if we can't control NIL, we can't control um, transfer portal and we can't control expansion and the ever changing world of college basketball, this guy says, Hey, I hate 10th place trophy society. I hate expansion, but it's out of control. Like so many things in sports are out of control. Live in PGA, the wild card edition, we're cheapening products across the board. I mean, there's a dilution of so many different things going on. Baseball and its analytics have made the product look 
completely irrelevant compared to what it used to be. Look at all these problems that are going on in sports across the board. Now they want to do the hip drop tackle in the NFL. Officiating, you want to blame officials. Oh, officials have never been worse. Actually, replay has never been worse. And inconsistency with penalties called have never been worse. So what do you expect officials to be when they're trying to keep track of it? And we still don't know what the hell a catch is in the NFL, let alone all of these extra layers of garbage that they keep putting into the rule book. Listen, the NCAA tournament, why not? Just put everybody in at this point. I've given up. Seriously, we have all these different things going on. The conference tournaments mean absolutely nothing at this point. And there's people out there, I have friends of mine who are like, oh, you know what, Cinderella doesn't even matter at this point. There's people who have that viewpoint. I don't share it because I think first, second, third, you know, the first and second weekends are still incredibly huge. I think that if you understand the NCAA tournament, you understand exactly where Cinderella's place is. You understand the mid-major feel. You understand the quality of different things. You understand that when your team goes to the tournament, what a big deal it is, what an accomplishment it is when a St. Bonaventure does make it. I'm saying all these things, understanding and wanting that in college basketball, but understand that all the things are, that are out of control in the game are limiting all of those things. That's the point of this video. It's not that I really want this. It's that all of these things have gotten so out of control that is our end game now just to put everybody in the NCAA tournament. I mean, just put everybody in at this particular point. That way, everybody gets the automatic bid. We're in a 10th place trophy society, a cancel culture society. Anyway, it fits right in line with our society. It fits right in line with canceling everything, canceling free speech, 10th place trophy. Let's just give up, right? Let's just give up. I mean, if we've got all these problems with the NIL and the portal, and it seems there's no end in sight, we've got expansion galore happening in the tournament no matter what, where we're going to let in all these 18 and 14 teams in anyway. We're going to let in mediocrity from the ACC, all the other power sixes. I mean, look, do we look at a 20 and 13 SMU team this year in the AAC and go, man, they might be a tournament team in a 96 team field. There's mediocrity its best. There's 10th place trophy society shined and ready to go. Just hand it to them. Just hand everybody everything. Put them all in at this point. Because why not? Why not? Work a triple, uh, literally a, a, a triple elimination tournament or a quadruple elimination tournament. Start it with the seeding from last year. Then you go into teams having their home games off of those seeds and then you move on and on and on and on to st specific venues. You can still have games at the Garden. You can still have games in Indianapolis. You can still rotate the Final Four. You can still have your monster TV contracts. You can still have all of it. And you still make a ton of money. And if most fans care about playoffs anyways more than a regular season and more than conference tournaments, and there's fans out there who actually believe that a Cinderella doesn't exist, that you can't make a Final Four and that that's not an accomplishment and that you're not accomplishing something if you're St. Bonaventure with a 2,500 to 3,000 enrollment with every challenge imaginable to you between no football, being a lower end A-10 team in terms of revenue, facilities, all these different things, playing power fives and the challenge to schedule. You know, you actually don't believe that any of that exists and you don't believe that they're succeeding when they make the tournament. You don't believe that Florida Atlantic making a final four is an accomplishment you don't believe that anybody's good at all in college basketball beyond the top four teams in a Final Four? Oh, wait, the number one team and everybody else is irrelevant? Okay, then let's have the number one team win out of all the 351 in general. Let's just do that. And we've got the NIL. We've got the portal. We've got everything out of control. We've got expansion. Why not? Get rid of everything except the NCAA tournament. Schools are opting out of the NIT because they don't want to play because players have a bad attitude. They're in the portal, the NIL, whatever the case may be, right? You didn't play freshman and you didn't have walk-ons going to the games early in the year. You've been practicing all year, but somehow you're not prepared. You don't want to take a collection of players, whoever you have, and go get blown out by a Villanova in the NIT if you're St. Bonaventure. You don't want to spend the money on that. Okay, okay. Whatever the reasoning is, whatever the excuses are for Bana, for Pitt, for whoever it is, for Wake Forest, for Syracuse, hey, fine. Don't worry about the NIT. To hell with it. Conference tournaments, to hell with it. We don't even, well, if they make a run in the ACC tournament, they can get in. No, don't worry about it. Hey, if Bonaventure can get hot in the A-10, they can find magic, the lightning in a bottle. They, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, regular season games, we got Ken Palm now. That's another bullshit thing. We got all the analytics, more bullshit. You know what? 
Don't worry about the Ken Palm. Don't worry about your net rating in the, in the beginning of the season. Don't worry about non-con. Don't worry about scheduling anybody. Don't worry about it. If you're Indiana State and you got left out of the NCAA tournament because you went 0-2 against Michigan State and Alabama, don't worry about it. You don't even have to play them anymore until the NCAA tournament where everybody gets in. Everybody gets the gold star. Everybody gets the 10th place trophy. Why? Because we can't control anything anyway. Let's just play a 351 team field. You play a triple elimination, quadruple elimination. Let's just do it that way. Start it during Thanksgiving, best holiday by the way, during feast week. You play your triple or quadruple elimination. You have your proper times, your proper weighted things. You have a game here, a game there. You lengthen out the tournament. You give them a week rest in between the later rounds and you go from there. You implement your home venues, Cameron, RC, Dome, Rupp, Allen, wherever the hell it is. And then you move on from there into your subdivision, up division, up until you get to the final four. And then you end it in Indy or you end it in Houston or you end it at Jerry's World or you end it wherever the hell you want to end it. And then you have your final four, no matter who it is. You have a Cinderella, you have a Cinderella. You don't have a Cinderella, whoop-dee-da-da-do. Who gives a flying shit about any of this anymore? Just put everybody in, cancel everything, cancel all the tournaments, cancel what we used to enjoy get rid of everything and just put everybody in 351 teams right in the tournament and we can just enjoy a playoff and not worry about anything and if the chalk walks great if the chalk doesn't walk oh well and you know what you want to sign the players to a better deal fine go sign them to more millions of dollars on the nil go sign to go sign them put contracts in if you want if you don't no problem don't worry about it who cares just put everybody in and you know what you can tell all the players when they come to your school, hey, you can play in the NCAA tournament for us, and then you can go to the portal, and you can go back to the NCAA tournament and wear another uniform. Dalton Connect, you can go play for Northern Colorado. You go play for Tennessee. Cool. Incoming freshman to Northern Colorado, hey, why don't you go to Northern Colorado, then to Tennessee, then go to Syracuse, then go to Kentucky. Try it at four different places in this jumbo tournament. Everybody's in. Everybody plays. Every coach. Every AD every president, every everything, everybody's in. Put everybody into one tournament and just play the games from Thanksgiving until March. Why not? And if you want the first week of April, I don't even care how it works. Put them all in at this point because that, it seems like, is the only way to go. Mike Lindsley with you here on ML Sports Take, brought to you by Stanley Law Offices, Barks and Rec Doggy Daycare, and our great friends over at Welch & Company Jewelers. Shop the showcase today at welchjewelers.com. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.